Good afternoon, September 24 podcast, Winston Capital Advisors. You can always find us in www.winston.capital. And if you want to get uh, a WhatsApp direct subscription to uh, the service, just let me know at, uh, again, at Winston Capital or FO at Winston.capital. So for today, and I'm running a little late from uh, usual Sunday, so allow me. But we're going to review a few things from Bloomberg that came about, news on Uber. We're going to discuss what happened at the United Nations last week. Uh, some credit news, Ukraine, uh, Ireland, Portugal, China, Argentina. A little bit of a funny story with the coupon of the Venezuela 27 bond and a little bit of color that we got from the Federal Reserve and then what happened with the elections this weekend in Germany. So let's start a little bit with a, with a quick Barron's recap. There was a good article on... Um, Warren Buffett saying uh, uh, that one million in 100 years. So if you did like, you know, the um, compounded interest actually is giving you a rate lower than the previous 100 years. And as Albert Einstein said once, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. You know, 100 years of compounding, it's a lot, a lot of time. And actually, 100 years ago, the uh, the Dow Jones was at 94, is now at 25,000. So from 25,000 to 1 million, actually, it's a, it's a lower rate of compound. But then you have to put inflation and stuff like that. So it's more fun than anything else. But there is a good article on the California teachers, one of the oldest pension funds in the United States, 1913, before Social Security. And it it's $200 billion, and it talks to the manager. Very interesting call on active versus passive management, liquid versus illiquid how it's, it's more difficult to get alpha in liquid and efficient markets like the United States equity. So it makes sense to be in passive managers like ETFs or more sort of passive. And how when you go to markets that are less liquid where the price discovery is more complex like emerging markets, some foreign markets and small caps, it makes uh, sense to be to active managers. So it's, it's a very interesting discussion on that and a little bit also on the state of the market, worried about valuation, uh, worried, Again, like everybody now, worried about valuation, but less worried about the state of the economy and the state of earnings for corporations. So good stuff over there. The big corporate news last week was Uber on Friday. They lost their license in London. Allegedly, the regulator said for uh, this co complete disregard for corporate uh, citizenship or good behavior, uh, about 3.5 million users in the city of London, 40,000 drivers, as I say, if the stock were publicly traded, it would probably would be down, you know, say 15%, plus or minus five. It's probably, you know, the company's private, so not a big thing. But um, it looks like they went to appeal or they have some meetings. But, you know, probably it's a spank on the very aggressive um, tactics, that, the tactics that Uber uses to, to operate. Last week, we had a full agenda with the United Nations, uh, the Bloomberg Global Forum that have replaced the Clinton Global Initiative, uh, bringing all the luminaries and you know, prime ministers and presidents and kings and what have you. And also we have the UN. At the end of the week, other than massive tra traffic jams in the city of New York, we got nothing. I mean, there was nothing new to report other than the jeep and jab of North Korea, some stuff in Venezuela, but no, nothing to really write home about it. On the credit front, we have uh, some. Ukraine issue for the first time in five years, 2.5 billion, 15-year bond, very well subscribed. 7% unchanged yield. And then we had uh, Ireland and Portugal upgraded. Uh, this, uh, you know, it's good because it's, you know, countries coming out of the, you know, global crisis, European crisis, and these are countries that, you know, tighten their belt, put fiscal discipline, cut expenditure, uh, and they have really improved. You know, Portugal is now running a fiscal deficit of 1.5% of GDP. So very good, upgraded. China got downgraded. Um, remember, they got it downgraded like, about like uh, two months ago, so it's another downgrade on the same basis. Too much leverage into the system. The government is trying to prop up the economy, and for that is uh, um, issuing a lot of debt at the government level and at the corporate level. So that's less, less, less good. And Argentina, very good numbers of industrial production. As I say, you know, this is one of the top trades that we have in the house. Long Argentina. We have elections October 22nd. And, uh, you know, as we discussed here before, President Macri won the primaries uh, unexpectedly in many areas, but still with an economy that was dragging and it was going under, has some headwinds. 
uh, this 3% uh, uh, industrial production, I think, would prop him to a more comfortable uh, victory. Time will tell, but I like uh, the idea. So, funny story with Venezuela. The coupon of the Venezuela 27th, which is one of the iconic bonds of the government, was due September 15th. The money didn't show up on time. You know, I remember you have um, 30 days to cure any uh, miss of payments. And they paid uh, last week, you know, sort of, a, you know, at the 11th hour. My point of view is this is a good exercise of how eventually the Venezuela default will be. No one doubts the willingness to pay. This country will never declare a unilateral default unless there is change in government. But if with this government, they will never declare they will stumble on a default. They will not fund the money. And then at the 11th hour, the money will not show up and they will be technically defaulted. Um, so I don't like the credit because of that. The, 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 as we move forward, the management of the economy is less and less professional, uh, less and less capable people running the thing. So at some point, this thing is gonna hit, um, you know, hit the wall and you'll wake up one, one day and won't be able to do it. And if you look, for instance, what happened with Toys R Us last week, they declared bankruptcy. Uh, the bonds were like trading at par three months ago, and then it went up just to 90-something, and now they're at 20. So the, you will not have the time to get out. That's my point. You, it, it's a binary trade. You will not have the time to get out. I would not recommend to own it. Uh, we have a lot of color from the Fed last week. Two main things, kind of the road to do um, increasing rates uh, in you know the coming three years. You know, apparently what the market is reading is one uh, increase this year, three in 18, two in 19, and one in 2020, which we will put as a 3% almost two and a half years from now. So very slow, very steady, obviously assuming that we don't have big changes in the economy either way or in inflation either way. So sort of a slow path is not that Yellen has said that, but this is more the reading of the market, sort of the consensus reading on what we expect. The other thing that they announced as of October, they will start shrinking the massive portfolio, $4.5 trillion. And the plan, which is a little difficult to understand, is like basically they start with a 10 billion cap, it's sort of an inverse cap, meaning the first 10 billion they don't spend. Remember, all the money they spend is coupons and stuff that gets accrued and they get paid every month. So. The first $10 billion don't get invested, everything else they buy. And they, they increase that cap until a year from now, they get at $50 billion a month that they will not invest. So that way, very slowly and progressively, they will shrink the portfolio. Obviously, the big question is, they've been buying all this debt, not the public markets. Now that the public market has to buy the public this debt and you know get the money out of your pocket, as opposed to the Fed that just prints the money because it has credibility and trust of the world. Now you have to get the money out of your own pocket. Will the rates stay at 2% or will the rates go much higher and then will have an effect on the economy? That's a million dollar question. I think everybody's looking at that, but I think it on purpose, the Fed is moving very, very slow on, on this whole issue. So, you know, more to come. Unfortunately, it's a very boring issue, but a very, very important uh, for all of us in this uh, environment. So we will follow it on a, on a weekly basis and report to you guys. Um, and the last one I have is um, uh, Germany. We got elections, uh, again, because I'm delayed and today is Monday morning. The elections came as expected, a little uh, bigger um, inroads than expected from the far right parties, but kind of in line. The market has not reacted uh, in any meaningful way. Uh, that's just a little bit weak, weakness in the euro, but I don't think it's big. Merkel um, stays there. That's it. Um, I hope to see you uh, next uh, Sunday, and maybe I'm going to start doing a midweek review on Wednesdays. Depends on what you tell me and what you think you like. Thank you very much. We'll reconnect next Sunday.